Hi guys, this is my let's play of Issa's Act 4 and it's the Pinnacle Monastery. So I'm still low level, I'm on Awakening 9 with Issa and I decided to forego my Dark Fire to master the Snicket which you can get a bonus combo every hit with at this low level even without bonus combo minus 1 gems as there's only 3 arrows at its early level. So I didn't mind I didn't have the Dark Fire because with a bonus combo every hit that's 3 times the attack. So you'll see I can get through this Kabuki really fast even with the low level weapon. So to get the bonus combo every hit you need to swipe diagonally up left. So that's a good weapon at this early stage. I think it costs 21,000 gold and I think that was a worthwhile purchase. I got it for the Squee tournament and I did quite well in that for such a low level character. Like I haven't got to the worker yet, this is my first playthrough and I did manage the first three stages of the Squee tourney but I couldn't pull off the last one. <laughs> It was too much without freeze magic and well I had freeze magic but I couldn't charge it. I had no magic charge gems and it didn't last very long and also I didn't have the great parry all gem yet of course. So I couldn't get many perfect parries. I couldn't actually get past 16. I tried many times <laughs> but that was all I could manage with the low level character. But I'll work towards getting the right gems for future Aegis tourneys. Like you need perfect parry damage titan gems to make the great parry all gem. You need three capped perfect parry damage titan gems. And then you can fuse a great parry all. And on the odd occasion they're offered once it's appeared in the treasure chest. So that was really good. Uh, but anyway, that's okay. I still got a thousand chips and the big gem wheel and more from the first three stages. So it's definitely worth entering and seeing how far you can go, even if you can't get the last prize, because it does offer a lot of gold and a lot of chips. And the same for all the clash mobs. That's what's really helping me at this early stage is to join in the clash mobs which offer quite a lot of golden chips and also the arena and also completing goals as you'll see I just did there. So the way to complete goals is basically just to play as much as you can and the more parries you do and blocks and using different uh, weapons and not getting damage things like that and bonus combos then you will complete goals and that really adds up there's quite a high amount given you'll see there for doing a thousand combos I got a few hundred chips and the same for doing perfect parries and that's why I've been able to complete the goals because of joining in the clash mobs the tourney and the arena that's really added to how many swipes I've performed, you know, combos and parries and blocks. And so I've managed to complete a lot of goals. So at this point, as you can see, I was over 4,000 chips. So that gave me a lot to work with at such an early stage. It's harder to get gold, actually. There's more chips offered in the clash mobs and in the arena it seems to come up quite a lot and the gold doesn't come up quite as much so I'm having more trouble with gold than chips and to get the gear for the tourney I sold some gems so that was a quick way to get some gold so now you'll see I'm finally meeting the gem cutter and I remembered the Kiro cash map for this room so I decided to get it because as I said I'm having more trouble with gold than chips so I decided to pay for the cash map and get the weapon rather than have to pay for the weapon if it appears in the ship. 
And so that's it. I got the phage light weapon for Issa. And that was helpful for me because I'd rather pay the chips and the gold at this point. And it also meant I met the gem cutter. So now he will be back at the hideout. And coincidentally enough, straight after the Kiro cash map, I run into Kiro. So that was <laughs> pretty synchronized. And I think he didn't like me taking his cash. But anyway, <laughs> I didn't have any trouble with him. As you can see from this playthrough, I'm not having any trouble with any of the Titans at this point because of that high attack from the Snicket with the bonus combo every hit. With dual weapons, if you get bonus combo every hit, they are three and four times the attack alternating. So, you know, one is three times attack, then the next bonus combo is four times attack. So that's why they really are the highest attack in the game. And it's more than, say, the solar trans even with its additional attack it gives to your element gem so no getting the bonus combo every hit with the dual weapon is the only way to get the four times attack so it really is the highest in the game so i'm getting close now to getting towards the boss and one other thing i did with isa is i changed her skills and you can do that in the skills menu by tapping the arrow at the bottom left of the screen and you need to pay chips to change the skills and each time you do it you have to pay more chips so this was only my first time so it was only 50 chips and I changed them so that I could put the stat points into Issa's magic and I was able to get the medium treasure chest to be opened, the lockpick 3. So that's really going to help when I run into some medium chests. And you'll see I decided to use the phage for this next battle and that gives me more to master. Although I was reluctant to give up the bonus combo every hit with the Snicket and also I like using that high dark fire but it's still worthwhile seeing as I had it to master it so that I can get the skill point because the more weapons that you've got, the more gear that you've got to master, the more stat points you'll have. And I was checking to see what the bonus combo was you can always pause in the middle of the fight and it will show you on that screen what the directions are for the bonus combo and this fell siren gave me a little bit of trouble it went on a little long that's all i nearly got it finished and there was still a small amount left but anyway that was okay it's just a bit of a long fight and going back to the squee tawny i have competed and won it previously in my main character slot so if you want to see the stats and what it has then check out the link in the description under this video to see the squee ring stats up to level 10. So there's my last titan before the boss and although some of those titan fights were quite long when it came to the boss she's only level 75 and I still decided to use my dark fire anyway just because she's a boss but you'll see it was surprisingly short fight and so my titans at the moment the normal ones are higher than the boss the bosses go up each time you defeat the worker however the titans go up on each awakening and just so you know deathless mode they level separately to normal mode Anyway, there was Lilindre finished, well, partly finished, and that was the end of Issa's battle with her. So that was really good, she was down, and that meant I got the reward of the Infinity Daggers. So another weapon for Issa, which is great, and also helps me work towards getting that classic Infinity Blade, which you can get when you've got all of the other Infinity Blades. And all the bosses drop the ones that you need. 
So back at the hideout, I decided to spend those chips that I've got, a lot of them, on more slots for the blacksmith at the forge. And that means I can master more gear and get more stat points. And also, at the moment, mastering is cheaper for me than buying the equipment. And because I had the gem cutter, I was able to fuse my first gem, which I had those three lower shock gems. So there it was, and I got another goal for that. So I hope you enjoyed my Let's Play of Act 4. Thanks for watching Tamil Channel, your favourite channel for Infinity Blade. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe, and check out my website and social pages. Thanks, see you next time.